In April 2010, Sudan held its first election since 1986. Previous elections had not been observed by major international bodies such as the European Union. The elections followed the 2005 Comprehensive Peace Agreement, which ended the longest war in Africa's largest state. The hostility between the mainly Arab Muslim North and the Christian and animist majority in the South had fueled conflict since independence in 1956. President Omar al-Bashir took power in a military coup in 1989 and has dominated northern politics despite being the first head of state to be indicted for war crimes by the International Criminal Court. In the south, Salva Kiir has led an autonomous government since 2005. The country has been ruled by an uneasy government of national unity led by Bashir who heads the National Congress Party, and Kiir, who leads the Sudan People's Liberation Movement, based in the southern capital, Juba. International experts had criticized the dominance of these two men, especially the way they restricted opposition parties, manipulated the media, and arranged the census and electoral boundaries to suit their own interests. The 2010 election was also the most complex election Africa has ever seen. Voters were expected to cast eight votes in the north and 12 in the south for the Sudanese presidency, the South Sudanese president, as well as for national parliament, state assemblies and state governors. The system mixed first past the post with proportional representation, especially for women, who were given 25% of the seats in the national and state assemblies. Women voted enthusiastically and in great numbers, despite the problems of high illiteracy and in the South, great difficulties in reaching the polling stations because of the absence of roads. Another difficulty was the voters' lists, which were often missing or inadequate. Voters were allowed five days to find the right polling station and then cast their vote. They did so with often great enthusiasm, despite the many procedural problems. Many polling stations opened late because either ballot papers or ballot boxes were missing. Another issue was intimidation and alleged rigging. The main opponent of Salva Kiir, Dr. Lame Kaur, complained that his party was seriously hampered in the election. Well, as you know, that when our party was formed, we were banned from coming to the South. We were told that we would not set foot in the South. Our people were being arrested, tortured. Our offices were being closed right here in Wau. The leadership of our party is now in jail. They are being detained without charges, without trial, without investigation since the 29th of September last year. And this was as a result of orders coming from Juba, not from the governor, not from any authority here. The Center for Foreign Policy Analysis in London, which sent 50 independent international observers noted a series of irregularities, especially in Terekaka and Central Equatoria. The election preparations from the very beginning has been a bit uh, difficult. And uh, as the now people get into polling, we begin to notice, and I begin to notice personally, some weaknesses from uh, the election commission itself. Uh, the election materials have not gone to to the specific locations on time. And uh, there is a lot of mess up on the question of who, who is voting, who is not to vote, because the names are mixed up. You know, one name is taken to another 
polling station, and as you go to that polling station, your name is not there. That is already frustrating, and many voters actually are going to miss voting because of this. Uh, the second thing is the uh, some places like in our county now here. The, mo the major difficulties is the, uh, the polling stations, some are far from one another. And so this again affect because in some places, you know, it is the, a sacrifice. There's no water, there is no food, and so people have to go to work. Uh, in some places, another weakness is, you know, the number of police are not enough. As you go around, if you go to other places, you find that there is a, a, a polling center without a police, without a policeman. And that is, that is, that is a difficulty. Uh, the third, uh, fourth thing is, is that uh, the, the fear is, is that the whole county here is a, a stronghold for, for the SPLM. So other political parties are intimidated. And there is a lot of information so I used to get as a church personnel. You know, somebody is beaten, somebody is arrested, somebody is, I don't know, threatened. And so uh, other political parties are not al having free uh, access to, to the polling stations even. As you go now to the polling stations, if you ask how many agents are here or whose agent is somebody, you will basically find that dominantly it is SPLM. And uh, other po young political parties are, are, are discriminated and denied their presence in the polling stations. <laughs> Did they say why he was put into custody? Also in Bantu, in Unity State, tribal as well as party clashes between the Bashir's NCP and Kir's SPLM undermine the integrity of the elections. It was sometimes difficult to separate assistance to confused and illiterate voters and attempts to manipulate voters. Yet in the context of very poor infrastructure, a long civil war and a lack of democratic traditions, that such a highly complex election could be conducted at all was remarkable. The involvement of so many women was also impressive. Unlike many Western countries, even prisoners were allowed to vote. Election is good because uh, it, it, it is there for you to elect your own uh, person who could rule you good with justice, equality, and democracy. So that is why, that is how much I know about the election. Because you have to vote for the person in the right place so that it should, it should rule with justice, and of course that is equality. There is democracy in the ruling party of the government. It's also like this. Sudan is to be divided. We had five who were actually arrested right from Wanduruma. They were brought here, but after two months, I think they were released. So we are now six who were arrested right in Juba here. So there's six in this prison currently? It's six. Yes. It's six. 
We are now here for four months, you see. And basically, these are people who are innocent. They weren't actually at the site there. They're all in Dubai. Even one was working with the election uh, commission. So right. they were just um, arrested in incident. Yeah. yeah, so the authorities have arrested uh, a certain number of people and you feel it's related to the election? Of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, definitely, yes. the minister, being a minister in the government, he has powers uh, of us. He can do anything that uh, uh, he can do. Yeah. Like now, we are remaining here because I understand he's the one. An important part of the election was the assistance of the United Nations mission to South Sudan. The UN also helped in the war-ravaged region of Darfur. The election was extended from three to five days, partly because of the lack of infrastructure in the south. The counting was also delayed. The European Union judged that the election did not meet international standards. But in the eyes of the methodology employed by the European Union, which is very strict. I can only say that this election have struggled to reach international standards. They have not reached them all, but they are carriers of democratic hope. The American Carter Center also made the same judgment. The African Union and the Arab League said that the election was free and fair. The UK Centre for Foreign Policy Analysis noted the many flaws, but said that the election was a credible and important step towards democracy, and hoped that lessons could be learned for the next step, the referendum scheduled for January 2011, which could lead to independence for the South. The overwhelming countrywide commitment to voting, the infectious enthusiasm, and the generally disciplined desire of the citizenry to participate are appreciated and applauded. After continuous disaffection and war since 1955, the fact that a national election was held in Africa's largest country with few traditions of democratic contests, widespread illiteracy and poor infrastructure, especially in the South, is to be commended. The fact that there was an election under such difficult circumstances. We consider the election to be a credible and important step on the road to political pluralism. The results were largely predictable. Because so many opposition parties withdrew claiming fraud, President Bashir won 68% of the vote, and so remains, for the time being, head of United Sudan. In the south, Salva Kiir took 93%. Here too, the main southern opposition parties cried foul. The south looks set on independence soon. Both regions are likely to argue about the country's large oil resources, which straddle the north-south disputed border. The two regions have fought a long civil war, so whether they can separate without further fighting is a key issue. Perhaps the election, which was largely peaceful, might point to a more amicable divorce between North and South.